space, the final frontier. Please join God Love Breath as he recounts his Star Trek experience. Hey guys, this is God Love Breath, and did you notice my really bad Leonard Nimoy impression at the beginning? I know, I'm really excited for the new Star Trek film, so I decided to do an introspective on my whole opinion of the original series of films. That means the first six, and plus maybe a brief recount of Star Trek Generations, because that's technically in between the original series and Next Generation, if you want my opinion. So let's start off with Star Trek I, the motion picture. This starts off beautifully. I love it at first. You get those beautiful shots of the Enterprise. It looks absolutely gorgeous. The music. Something has to be said about the music that was orchestrated for this movie because I can listen to the music just straight out. And it is beautiful, beautiful science fiction music. It could be... It sounds... For one thing, what I think is so interesting is that this movie started off what Star Trek sounded like from then on out. Because Star Trek now, as compared to Star Trek back in the 1960s, they don't sound anything like each other. This film started the whole Star Trek sound as we know it. The story doesn't really evolve into anything worth really speaking about. It's got a really weak script. There's no really good dialogue in the movie. It's ambitious. It's ambitious for sure, especially considering the franchise that they were undertaking in. But the pacing is so slow. It just drags on and on. The whole thing is this feels more like a spiritual successor to 2001 A Space Odyssey without any of the interesting philosophy that had made that movie what it was. But here's the whole thing. Star Trek is not, this film does not res respect the tone of the original series. This is a completely different beast. And to be honest, if this movie had a decent conclusion or built up to anything, it would have been a good film. But the ending is such a letdown that you're sitting here watching, re-watching the film, and you go, it's all this slow-paced, really hard, hard science fiction with no payoff. Have no problem with hard science fiction. Have no problem with slow pacing. But the script is bad. That's the real weakness of Star Trek The Motion Picture. That being said, beautiful music. Great, great looking movie for the time that it was made. I'm going to let it, this one slip a little bit. It's a two and a half out of five. It's entirely mediocre. I wasn't entirely bored to death until the end. I really enjoyed the first 45 minutes or so. So not the worst Star Trek film, but certainly one of the weaker ones. Which leads us to Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Khan! By far the best of the Star Trek films. Emotional. This ending... And everybody knows the ending. There's no point in denying it anymore. Spock dies at the end. And he goes up against the glass and goes, Jim, you have always been my friend. Live long and prosper. And it's one of the best endings to, like, any Star Trek movie I've ever seen in my life. And the villain? Okay, Khan. Khan is such a well-developed villain. His motive is understandable. And the acting by, I think it's Ricardo Montalban who plays Khan. And he's so good. He is so good. There's no other way to describe it. This is a much improved film over the original. It has a sharp and intense story. It feels more like a Star Trek film than the original did. But not only that, but it isn't tied down by the fact that it's a Star Trek film. It does something new with Star Trek. It takes it in a different direction while also respecting the characters. This is definitely a four and a half out of five film. Even if you don't like Star Trek, Wrath of Khan is one of the best science fiction movies ever made. Period. Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. This is a step below Wrath of Khan, but it's still a really good sequel. Bringing Spock back was kind of cheap, in my opinion. But it's still a really effectively told piece of science fiction adventure. And it's really greatly directed by Leonard Nimoy, who seems to understand Star Trek a heck of a lot more than William Shatner does. And we'll deal with Shatner and when we reach Star Trek V. But Leonard Nimoy is a great director. The script was good. This, there's quite a bit of more of an emphasis on action than there was in the previous Star Trek films. But, eh, you know, there's an emotional payoff at the end of this that's an homage, a complete homage to Wrath of Khan. Which brings us to the whole point is that, for me, number two and number three of the Star Trek series is the true, are the true Star Trek films. They're the ones you need to see, number two and number three, consecutively. The rest of them, you can pretty much glance over. Some of them are entertaining, but they're not the core of what makes the Star Trek films so memorable. 
Star Trek IV, which is, um, darn it, what's the title of Star Trek IV? Gosh darn it, it's the one where they saved the whales. I think it's called, it's not called the, undis is it the Undiscovered Country? Who knows? Okay, it's Star Trek IV. Look it up. It's the one where they save the whales. It's a time travel story that really has more of a resemblance to Back to the Future than it does to Star Trek. It's funny and completely unnecessary. It's the equivalent of a really good anime filler episode. It's there. You know, it's fun. You kind of enjoy it a little bit. You have some fun with your favorite characters. But it serves no real purpose. There's no point to this movie. It's just pointless filler, and it's a little bit preachy on the whole save the whales kind of message. But... You know, it's fun, the script is fun, but it feels more like a parody of Star Trek than it is an actual Star Trek movie. I have no problem with humor in Star Trek because it's part of what made the franchise so successful in the first place, but this is just a spoof. And it's an okay spoof. is isn't fantastic. There's some really funny scenes in it, but again, it's filler. It's not a true Star Trek film, which is why I would give it a 3 out of 5. It's worth watching. If you're not a Trekkie, you're probably going to like it a lot more than if you are one. Star Trek V. Oh my God, Shatner. Seriously, Shatner. What the hell? What the hell did you do here? Okay, for those of you who don't know, the story was written by Shatner. The film was directed by Shatner. And this is by far the worst of the original series. This is like... Okay, this is the film equivalent of Spock's brain, for those of you who are Trekky enough to know what that means. It tries... To tie in all this pseudo-spiritual and religious crap, which is very, it's not successful. He doesn't do it in a successful way. And it ends up just feeling very preachy and overly manipulative. Shatner, the only way he knows how to direct, apparently, is to manipulate. Like, there's scenes in here that are supposed to be emotional, but they're so obvious, and there's such a lack of subtlety to it, that it's laughable. They become funny. They're not effective. And for one thing, there's so many out-of-character things in this film. The crew doesn't act like the crew. It's obvious Shatner has no idea what Star Trek means to people. He, doesn't, he isn't as effective of a director as Nimoy was, who directed number three and number four. He doesn't... Ah, Shatner, you piss me off. Never direct anything ever again. You got that? Don't touch anything. And besides that, the ending to this movie is so unintentionally hilarious that... Okay, they go out to see God, basically. And God looks like the wizard from Wizard of Oz. And you know it ends up being an alien pretending to be God. But you might as well have had the classic, I am the great and powerful Wizard of Oz. It's, it was almost like a ripoff. It was so bad. Star Trek VI. This was where things started to get back on track. And this film was truly the spiritual successor to Wrath of Khan and Search for Spock. I think it was directed by the same man who did Wrath of Khan, so that would make sense. It's not quite as effective as those two films, though still well worth checking out. One of the stronger Star Trek films. It's an important piece of Trek history, too, because it shows the, the peacemaking between the Klingons and the Federation and how that whole thing began. And not only that, but it showed some of the you know biases of Captain Kirk. I love the fact that Kirk... Is like the only guy through this whole thing that's like, they're animals. We can't make peace with those Klingons. And, of course, he ends up getting framed for killing the Klingon uh, president or some old stuff like that. That's where I'm trying to become like this educated Trekkie and I'm screwing up all these facts. But Kirk ends up getting framed for something and blah, blah, blah. And they play that recording of him saying, they're animals. We can't make peace with them. They are horrible. They are Klingons. This is a really good movie, and it's got a really big heart to it, but, you know, there's something just lacking here. It doesn't have, for me, the emotional push that Star Trek II and Star Trek III did. Still a good movie, still really well written, three and a half out of five. Nothing too terribly impressive, but, you know, it's a good Trek film, good Trek. Star Trek. Unfortunately, I had to cut off the bit about Star Trek Generations because YouTube rejected my video for being too long. 11 minutes, gosh darn it, because my thing about Star Trek Generations was really hilarious because I hate that movie. I'll just say it, I just hated that film. This is Got a Love Breath, and unfortunately I have to sign out because YouTube won't accept my videos as they are. Peace, love, and Yuki Nagado, whom I am smooching right now. Mwah. See you guys.